Okay. Lord God the Father, just thank you for this time being together in your word, Lord God, in unity in Jesus Christ. Lord God, may you bless this time in your word, Lord. Any visitors, Lord, we ask you to bring. For the honor and glory of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. John chapter 1, verse 18. Oh, 18. Moving on. Verse 16. And we come to a remarkable statement in the Bible. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son. Now that's a comma, but I'm stopping there for a moment. No man has seen God at any time but the only begotten Son. That statement by John, the Apostle, says that Jesus is God and God is Jesus. No man has seen God but the only begotten Son. So if you're going to see God, who are you going to see? You can't see God, so who are you going to see? You're going to see the Son. And when everybody who ever in the life of Jesus, from birth to, to the resurrection, in 40 days after the resurrection, he's walking about, saw God. But to see God, you can't. No man has seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. So, the thing about the Trinity we cannot explain is Jesus is God and God is Jesus, yet God is the Father and Jesus is the Son. So when you say there's two, yeah, but they're one. But they're two, and yet they're one. We can't explain that, and that's where some religions go off and you're wrong, you don't know what you're talking about. Yes, I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to the Trinity. Got it. I'm going to trust the Bible that says 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. You have a problem with that. That's between you and God. I don't have the problem. And then when we get eternity, which we're not going to study, but it even gets even worse about the Trinity and what happens. But, so here we are now. God is a spirit. John 4, 24. So, God is that little fathom of you can't see. And the Bible says God is a spirit, capital S. That's the Holy Spirit. You can't see the Holy Spirit, you can't see God, but you can see Jesus. People have a problem with this. That when it comes to the doctrine and the belief and the subject of the Trinity, it divides religions from Christianity. So, God is the Spirit. They that worship must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So, okay, we've been born of a woman, physical birth. You need to be born again of the spiritual birth. And being born again through that spiritual birth, you are now able to reach God, and God is able to reach you in the spirit. That's why you can't reach God with your works. You can show you've done something, and yet you can't show God. And I apologize if this me if this lesson today is going to be, what are you talking about? I, I don't get that. Absolutely correct. This is one of those doctors that are not taught in pulpits, in, in classes, because I may look like a dummy. They may think I don't know what I'm talking about. Yes, absolutely. I'm glad to admit to you I'm a sinner and I don't understand God fully. Now, isn't that honesty? So, no man has seen God. He's a spirit. Exodus 24.10. Exodus 24.10. Exodus 24.10. And now you're going to get into Bible verses where they're going to contradict, but we're going to look at what their contradiction lies. Exodus 24.10 and 11. Now what we read in John has written long after Exodus has been written. 
Exodus 24, 10, and 11. And they saw God, capital G of Israel. And there was under his feet as were a paved work of sapphire stone, as it were a body of heaven, in his clearness. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel he laid not his hand, and they saw God and did eat and drink. In his clearness. Okay, now we got a contradiction. Bible says, what we just read today, God's the Spirit, no man's ever seen God. In the book of Exodus, Moses, they're up on the mountain, they see God. Throw the Bible out. Matthew 3.16 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not rightly divide, uh, need not to be ashamed, but rightly divide in the word of truth. God did not, I was talking to somebody the other day, God did not put an index in the Bible. All right, where's all the doctors on the Trinity? Oh, page 587 to 600. That's not how he did it. He put here, there, he, over there, over there, here a little, there a little. And he makes you go look for it. Because if you want the truth for God, you're going to have to go look for it. That's why the, the, the Christian bookstores are so... A laven of selling their books that are not Bibles because all the answers are between the pages of a novel or a hardcover or a softcover. That's not how the Bible's laid out. That's why the Bible says study. And when you come up with something in a Bible, whatever you think, all right, if I come up with a doctor to be saved, you need to get in the ark. All right, that's in the Bible, it's there, there it is. Now, you've got to look at other scriptures. If there's scriptures that deny what you think the Bible said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, then getting in the ark to save your soul it has nothing to do with us. And if you find something in the Bible and one passage of the Bible declares what you have found wrong, then it's wrong. That's studying to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Now, religions will jump in there. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. All right, go jump off a building. You can do all things, right? Go jump off the building. Pick the Empire State Building for one. Go jump off it. Well, oh, yes, yes. Your misapplication of Scripture. You go in there. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. And then you got somebody in the house who doesn't go to church, who's not doing what they're supposed to. No, your house not. So when we look at Matthew 3.16, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, so that means he's immersed, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he, that be John the Baptist, saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and lightning upon him. And a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I well please. John said, I see Jesus. We know he's God. He's done the studies. John also says, I saw the Holy Spirit come down. Not a dove. Please don't say it's a dove. It says like a dove. And I have been able to watch doves at my feeder. And they flop flip. And they make a sound when they land. I can't describe it. I can't draw a picture of it. But watch a dove. You see a dove or doves coming... Watch how they descend to the ground or the fence post, wherever it is. That's what it means. It doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit came as a dove. And everybody goes to all kinds of doctors. That's not what it said. Like a dove. And I've seen them come down. And they all seem to come down it the same way. Can't describe, but there it is. So, here's the Father speaking to John the Baptist. This is my beloved son. Who He heard a voice, but he didn't see nothing. He says he seen the Holy Spirit, and it descended like a dove. And there's Jesus, because he's seen. He can touch Jesus. So, with this study again, now go back to Exodus 3, 6. Yeah, we got, we got to look at the Scripture. God's not going to lay it out, 1, 2, 3. That'd be too easy. Can you imagine if God laid out like that how many religions there would be today? Outside of all the religions we already had, if God said, okay, this, this is a simple path. 
in John 3, 6. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face and was afraid to look upon God. Okay. 3, 2. Same chapter, verse 3, 2. The angel of the Lord appeared on him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. That's that burning bush. Along with that burning bush that everybody draws pictures of and teaches, they don't mention the angel of the Lord. And the angel of the Lord speaks to Moses. He says, you know what? He says, all right, I am God the Father. The angel of the Lord said that. I am the God of Abraham. The angel said that. The God of Isaac. The God of Jacob. The angel of the Lord said that. And he also says, he was afraid to look at God. Now the Bible has told us that God is the Spirit. No man has ever seen God at any time. And here Moses is looking at God and the angel proclaims to be God. So God in the Trinity, remember God the Father, He's a Spirit. God the Son, He's in the flesh. If you go to heaven today, you will see the physical body of Jesus. How do you know? Thomas, reach in and put your, whole, put your fingers in the holes of my hands and the hole in my side. You will see Jesus in a body, a resurrected body. And according to John the Baptist, you will somehow see the Holy Spirit. Have you ever seen, I mean, ever, I, I'm not saying they're real or not, but I, I'm going to just say, okay? You ever seen those pictures where they say that, you know, they've seen this ghost in these hallways and stuff like that? It is an image. And frankly, I believe in all that. I believe the devil. But you can usually see through it. Now, maybe that could be the Holy Ghost. You're going to be able to see through him. I, I don't know, but we're moving on. But the angel of the Lord. Now, let's look at Acts 7, verse 30. We'll ask Stephen. Acts chapter 7, verse 30. And Stephen is going to give us the history of the Jewish people. And Stephen does quite well when it comes to the life of Moses. And what we're looking at here to give you a clue from what we probably already studied, the angel of the Lord that you find in the Bible, the Old Testament, is Jesus Christ in his pre-carnate form. There are many angels in heaven. There's one recorded archangel, that's Michael. There's no others. Gabriel is an angel. Satan has his angels. The Bible says that God knows the name of all the angels, as he knows the stars in heaven. And there's something between stars and angels, but we're not going to get to that right now. But the, the angel, the angel of the Lord. Now, you can go down your road and say, I live in a house on this road. Or you can say on the road that you live, I live in the house, and be pointing to it. Now it's specific, it's a definite article, that house. The angel of the Lord, Stephen says in Acts 7 verse 30, And when forty years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in the bush. Now, not going to Hebrews, and other places in the Bible, the Bible says our God is a consuming fire. So there he is again. There is God as the fire that he is. And there is God manifested as Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God, correct? Mm -hmm. So here he is, the angel of God, showing up to be Moses. Guess who I am? You're the angel of the Lord. Correct. I'm also God. I'm glad you're not a Jehovah Witness or the Unitarians. Because <laughs> they don't believe that. And many times in the Old Testament, that angel of the Lord will proclaim to be God. He shows up to Joshua, chapter 3 or 4, I think it is. In the book of Joshua, he, and Joshua says, who are you? He says, I am the captain of the host. Joshua drops to the ground and worships him. No Jewish man worships any man. They won't even put a face on their coins. Because you can't worship images and idols. 
And that man that stands as the captain of the Lord of the host takes that offering and says, take off your shoes like he did Moses, for you're standing upon holy ground just like Moses. Though Jesus was born in Bethlehem, somewhere around 0 B A.D., 0 B, uh, 6,000, whatever he is, Jesus Christ has always been. And where has he been in the Old Testament? The angel of the Lord, the captain of the host. Moses said, God shall send the prophet, liken unto you. Well, that's Jesus. So we do see Jesus in the Old Testament. We see him as the man, Christ Jesus, incarnate after his birth. But he will show up proclaiming to be God in the Old Testament, which is messed with with Bibles. So let's see Luke chapter 9, 29. Luke chapter 9, verse 29. If you take your... I was going to say primitive, but that's that's a Baptist denomination. If you take your very simple Baptist church, we got a preacher, we got a Bible, we sing to him, and you walk to him and said, can you find me anywhere in the Old Testament Jesus Christ? They wouldn't even open up their Bible. Because to them, you know, Jesus was born in a manger, and the three wise men came, and blah, 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 blah. No, that's not the truth. And you know it's remarkable that the angel of the Lord first shows up to a funny particular person. He shows up to Hagar, the mother of Ishmael. And guess where he shows up? He shows up at a well. John chapter 4. Pay attention to women in wells and men that show up. Jacob is at a well and, Jake, and uh, Rachel comes with her sheep. And he waters the sheep for Rachel, taking the stone away when Jesus said in John chapter 4, I am the water of life. After asking that woman, please give me a drink. The Bible's remarkable. So John, I mean Luke 9, 29, that's correct writing. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance, his face, his, his face was, was altered, and his raiment was white and glistering. And behold, there talked with him two men who were Moses and Elias. I thought they were dead. There's a change in appearance of Jesus. Jesus can change his appearance. Mary's outside the sepulcher, she's boo hooing. Jesus has died. All right, she's sitting there, and everybody's giving up hope, and she's boo-hooing. And a man comes up to her, and he supposes her to be the gardener. Well, guess who the first gardener was in the Bible? Adam. Guess who Jesus is? He's the second. Adam. Here's another story you got to relate. So Matthew thirteen, uh, Matthew seventeen two, Matthew seventeen two. Jesus Christ is a remarkable person. He's no ordinary man. When he spoke the scriptures, when he said, uh, you know, God created Adam, I forget how, but you know, he talked about the marriage. When he said, when, when God made man and woman, male and female, uh, Jesus was there when it happened, and Jesus was part of that. And when he said, when he spoke about Moses, spoke about Abraham, Jesus knew him personally, not as the infant and the man Jesus, but as that angel of the Lord, and showed up to Abraham. Abraham sitting one day, he's sitting outside his tent, and here comes three men. And one of those men, the Bible says, is God. How can he see, how can he see three men if God's a spirit? One of them was God, Jesus Christ. In a flesh that looked like a human. He said three men. It is remarkable. But, and then we're getting to the count again. The Trinity. Explain it. Oh boy. So Matthew 17, 2. And he was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun. 
Now that's where they get the halo. Did you know when Jesus was on this earth as a man, adult man, walking around his ministry three and a half years, you know people did not know who he was? One time he said, who is that? They, they would say, Jesus of Nazareth, right? You figure if him and his disciples walked around with a halo of the church with Drew, that, you think they, oh, 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 I didn't see the sun <laughs> this. I'm sorry, that's Jesus. You see how ridiculous when they, when these religions are? No one would ask who, I mean, what did Pilate say? Here's this big yellow disc around Jesus' head. Where do you come from? <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, I forgot. There's your halo. You brought your no. See, it's ridiculous. And there are people who did not know who Jesus was when he walked in on this planet. But he is God manifested in flesh, and he is the angel of the Lord of the Old Testament, proclaiming to be God. Put in these religions that say Jesus is not God in the trash can. Jesus never said it. Did we just read in Exodus? I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. I am the God of Jacob. And Moses feared to look at God. And the Jehovah Witnesses say, well, that, you know, that was Jehovah. Then you take him over to in John chapter 1 and show him God's the Spirit. No man sees him. And the conversation, because they can't answer you. So John 1.18. And we're going to be looking at for a while, we're going to look at Jesus in his incarnate form. See how far we get. John 1.18, okay, so no man has seen God at any time. We've seen Jesus. I haven't. But the disciples and all the people around Jesus' time. Pharaoh, I mean Pharaoh, Pilate stood and looked into the eyes of God being beaten and bruised. I believe Pilate knew who he was. Because he tried to get rid of him, but he caved into the people. John the Beloved said, listen, this is God manifesting his flesh. John the Baptist, this is God. Here he is. So, no man has seen God at any time, the only begotten Son. So the God and Son are the same, which is in the bosom of the Father. He has declared him. God has declared him. This is my Beloved. This is, we're coming up to the Baptist. This is my beloved son, who I'm well pleased. Now John is writing after the fact. From the account of John the Baptist, John says, I've seen the Holy Spirit come down. I heard God say, this is my beloved son. So the only begotten son, when you see Jesus, you see God. John 10.30. And this is another verse to throw at them who don't believe Jesus is God, whatever religion. Mm -hmm. And this is simple. This is one of those simple verses you can learn. Like Jesus wept, John 10.30. Yeah. I remember when we were back in the ministry in, in Connecticut, when people drive around this white old pickup truck, they were Jehovah Witnesses, trying to beat us to the door. And every time we came face to face, I'd quote the scripture, and they would, peel off that, that little Dotson truck like it had was for a race draft. And I would anger them. Like I anger them today with Thomas's words. But I would anger with this. This is what Jesus said. If your Bible's red letter, it said, I and my Father are one. Jesus never proclaimed to be God. That's a capital L. Jesus said the Father and I, John chapter 10, verse 30, are one. So when you see Jesus, you see God. Though you can't see God because He's Spirit, you see Him. So, you know the miraculous thing of the incarnate Christ that has come to be born of a virgin and become 100% man, 100% God? You know what the miracle there is? Now I can see God. I can see Him through Jesus, absent from the body, present with the Lord. When I die, I'm going to see God through Jesus. And he's got the wounds and the, and the, and the uh, scars in his hands and feet inside. If I were to be raptured right now, the rapture happened right now, we go to the clouds and we meet Jesus in the air, we're going to see God. If you deny he's, he's God, you won't see him. You'll see hell. And in John chapter 20, 28...
John 20, 28. You all know me. You know this verse. But I've never gotten an answer. I've heard, I've heard from our pastor, I've heard from how they would answer, but they, the ones I talk to, you can't answer, and they get angry and call the cops on you. That happened. Mm -hmm. That's Tracy. Mm -hmm. And Thomas wow. answered and said unto him, My Lord, my God. There were a bunch of Jehovah Witnesses. They had their little pamphlet rack sitting there. I walked up to him and said, I have one question. Nice. Not rude and crude. I said, I got one question for you. Thomas said, My Lord, my God. Answer that. Now, every week, I, every time I saw them, I'd walk up to them and say, Thomas said, My Lord, my God. And when I deal with it, they'll try to go on a button. No, no. Answer my question first. Then we'll go other. Just answer my question. Thomas said, my Lord, my God. And there was no rebuke by Jesus. Here's a testimony of a man that saw Jesus after the resurrection. He saved because Jesus spoke to him. He said, you know, blessed are they who, who have believed, but blessed are they who haven't seen me believe. Jesus did not say, hey, Thomas, no, I'm not God. I'm sorry. No, he didn't say that. He just said, my Lord, my God, and Jesus took it. And then he says, verse 29, Thomas believed. And then he talks about those who have not seen Jesus. Blessed are they that believe. Believe what? My Lord, my God. So, as a Christian, a child of God, I will see God through Jesus. He was holy, he was righteous, without sin. So God giving us Jesus in the flesh is giving ability. Now, when we get to New Jerusalem, we look at that throne of God, what are we going to see? I don't know. But when we look to the right of that throne, who are we going to see? We're going to see Jesus. Amen. Something with the Holy Spirit we're going to see, I don't know what. But there's also scripture and implication. I see that they all become one total being in the eternity, but we're not going to talk about that right now. So, when we see Exodus 3, 6 and Exodus 3, 2, the angel of the Lord speaking and talking to Moses, back to John 1, 18, where we started off. Now, now when we look at John 1, 18 now, let's remember, the angel of the Lord shows up. Stephen says as a, as a, as a, a thing of fire in that bush that doesn't consume that bush. Hebrews says, our God's a consuming fire. That angel that spoke says, I'm God, I'm God, I'm God. Moses said, I'm afraid to look at God. Now let's look at our passage now. No man has seen God at any time. That's a lie. No, it's not. The only begotten Son. So if Moses did not see God, who did he see? He saw the Son. Who did what? Proclaim he's God. Now, was that really a contradiction, or did we have to look at some scriptures to see it? And when you get religious, they're, they're lazy to say, open your Bible here, open your Bible there, open your Bible there. I'll tell you another way how they deceive you. Open your Bible, and they go there, and then they go here, and then they go here, and they go here. And you, but you're just trying to get to the first verse. They're on the 22nd verse. And those are realms of, I'm going to deceive you. That's why you check them out. That's why you write down what scriptures are. So if you didn't get it, go home and read. And if I'm wrong, or if my family finds me wrong, show me where I'm wrong and I'll look it up. And if I'm wrong, I'll correct myself. I'm not afraid to. Because I am able to make mistakes and I pray that I don't. But when Moses, that, you know, we talk about that burning bush. Now, I didn't grow up in a Sunday school. I didn't grow up to have any active true church when I was 18 years old. I've heard the stories of Moses and the burning bush, but I never heard the story of Moses, the burning bush, and God. Now maybe they teach him, I don't think so, but that, that miracle of that flame not consuming that tree is God the flame, God the righteousness. How do you purify that? If I have a sliver in my finger and I say, honey, come over here, she's going to grab a needle and she's going to take that needle and she's going to light some kind of flame and she's going to put that needle in that flame to sterilize it. So she can take that sliver out of my finger without infection, hopefully. I mean, I mean infection can get in there. But God's sterile. He's an everlasting fire and burns up. That bush didn't burn up. And he proclaimed to be God, plain and simple. Amen. 
So the Jehovah Witness and the Unitarians have this verse totally, absolutely, completely wrong. Now, again, we've seen John 10.30, 20, 28, 1.18, Exodus 3.16, Exodus 3.2. Jesus is God and God is Jesus. In the Old Testament, he shows up as the angel of the Lord. And I'm looking here. I think we can get these verses and we'll stop. All right, before his in incarnation, Matthew 1.20. Want to see another miracle in the Bible? Matthew 1.20. In Matthew 1.20 it said, But while he thought anything, behold, the angel of the Lord, there he is, appeared in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto, me, unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived, she's pregnant, in her is the Holy Ghost. Okay? Who did Mary give birth to? Jesus. All right? Who is the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament? Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> so who had the birth annou announcement? Ron's here. Excuse me for interrupting, folks. So who had the birth announcement of his own birth? Jesus did. Hey, Ron. Hi. How you been? So let me ask you something. What baby in what womb has ever declared to people, Hi, I'm here. <laughs> no, that's the parent's job. I'm pregnant. I'm going to have a baby. And you go to the doctor. They do tests. Jo Joseph's like, I think Mary cheated on me. She's pregnant. I don't know what happened. The baby that's in her womb, who is Jesus, the angel of the Lord, showed up to Joseph in the dream and said, Hi, it's me. And told her, says, the Holy Ghost has done it. That's remarkable. That's another miracle that's not recorded in the miracle. The baby Jesus spoke to his, his adopted father before he's even born. His first words were, look at the first words of Jesus before he's even born. Um... He says, Behold, the Lord appeared in the dream, saying, this is the first words of Jesus before he's born. Joseph, thou son of David. That's his first words. Now, Joseph being his adopted father, you can kind of run about and say the first words of Jesus was daddy. His father was his God. Isn't that kind of remarkable? That's the angel of the Lord. That's Jesus Christ. Matthew 2.13. And while they did, were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord, there he is, appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Rise, take the young child and his mother, and flee to Egypt. Jesus is asleep in, in a crib, or maybe his mother's arms, or something. He's a young child now. That young child shows up to the angel of the Lord and says, Joseph, you've got to get me out of here to Egypt. Now, if your baby's this young, if he's talking... That's a miracle. Mm -hmm. If that baby said, you know, you need to get me out of here because someone's going to kill me, that's even more miracle risk. That's the same angel of the Lord that showed Moses in the bush says, I'm God. I'm God. Matthew 28, 7. A couple more scriptures. Matthew 28, 7. This angel of the Lord is remarkable if... <laughs> And what he does. Matthew 28, 7. Oh, uh, 28, 2. My 72 is here. 28, 2. All right. Christ is in the tomb. Ready? And behold, there was a great earthquake. Go to the breeze is coming. There was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Jesus Christ came down from heaven after ascending to the Father, depositing the blood for the Father. And he kicked that stone away. I just wait for the women to come. They'll be here pretty soon. You wonder if he had a powwow with those, those centurions. 
What were those men that guarded in that tomb after that? You know, the Bible never records what happened. I mean, they went back and said, you know, they reported and they told them to tell a lie. But the angel of the Lord, we've been studying who is God and who is Jesus Christ, rolled his own stone away. The women say, well, who's going to roll that stone away? I mean, that thing is big. Jesus, no problem, I took care for you. Luke 2 9. Luke 2 9. Two more places. Luke 2 9. This angel of the Lord is remarkable. Can't be no ordinary angel. Because didn't that angel, didn't Moses worship that angel? And if you look in the book of Revelation, John bows down twice to an angel. He says, no, 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 get up. Don't you worship me. This angel allows worship. Luke uh, chapter 2, verse 9. And lo, the angel of the Lord, there he is again, came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. This is where the angel of the Lord shows up to the shepherds. Jesus was just born, wrapped up in swelling cords. The angel says, hey, I'm over there. I'm the one wrapped up in swelling clothes, dying the Messiah, go see that's, that's miraculous. Jesus is widely known for proclaiming his own birth without the newspapers. The baby's wrapped up. He can't do nothing. And he shows up to shepherds in the field. Shepherds, he says, I am the, I'm the, uh, the great shepherd. John chapter 10. He says, go find me. And there's a sign. I'm wrapped up in clothes. Don't, don't unwrap me, but there I am. And Acts 5.19. Acts chapter 5.19. Now Jesus Christ is already ascending into heaven. He's definitely at the throne of the, fa throne of the Father, the right hand. This is after His ascension. So he still shows up as the angel of the Lord. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand. Isn't that what Jesus said? Go in all the world. There he is. That angel of the Lord showed up and said, Okay, you, your prison doors are unlocked. Go out there and start preaching again. And he shows up in Acts 8.26. All well, these verses are in Acts think. In Acts 8.26, Hebrews says something about entertaining angels unaware. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way. Go down, go over here and preach the gospel. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. That's the angel of the Lord, that's Jesus. Acts chapter 12 Two more places, same chapter. Acts chapter 12. Longer after the ascension of Jesus. Talk about Peter. I always got to wonder, did, did Jesus ever wanted to do this? Read this. If you know Peter. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and the light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side. Bam! Oh. That's Jesus. Peter is asleep in the prison and the angel of the Lord comes up, bam, wake up. Oh. That's God. He really had to slap him to wake him up. And then chapter 12, verse 23. Watch this one. This is, the, this is Herod. Immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory and he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. Here's the angel. Here's a disease. Now die. Because you didn't give God the glory. Uh, who did that angel Lord said to Moses who he was? God. You didn't give me the glory. Here's a disease. And that's the story of the angel Lord. And we're going to look at it in greater detail next week, Lord willing. We're going to look at the places in the Bible he shows up. And it's remarkable. Right? Like you said, the first time he shows up, We'll 
look at, hopefully, Lord willing, in greater, great, greater detail. But this angel of the Lord is a, is a wonder and a preview to see. That's God. That's not only God, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And I've never known any baby, baby to get their own birth announcement. Lord God the Father, just thank you for this time. Lord God, thank you. You are a miraculous, wonderful, outstanding, unspeakable God. And Lord, I, I, I pray for Tracy, Lord God. It, it's not yeah, bad news for me. Two days of dialysis, Lord God, it's keeping her alive and keeping her healthy. I pray for her cough, Lord, and if I may pray for Thomas, Lord God, right now, please. Lord, I don't know the circumstances, but Lord, he's a Christian, he's saved, and he's our brother in the Lord. Lord, I lift him up, Lord, for Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen.